Yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> Yo, that was pretty fucking nuts, man. We got about three hours. Yeah, I know. Holy shit. I've never like been in the ring and heard an ovation like that. That was surreal. Wow. But I mean, it wouldn't be, this wouldn't be the most accurate depiction of my life if it wasn't the most difficult week to get here, if the card wasn't subject to change. I mean, this is my life story. Like, work for it, work for it. Every obstacle in the way, get there, day of, it's supposed to be taken away from me. This story isn't over. And I'm, this is fucking great, man. I was just searching for gyms and it was like, oh, brand new, LA Fitness. And I'm like, oh, wonderful. Like, I have my membership there from Philadelphia. They're probably like expecting like some big, huge like bodybuilder or something. Like, a little I did say pro wrestler, so yeah. they're probably thinking Paul Hogan Jr. Big, is going to walk in. Big jacked up guy. <laughs> they're not going to believe I'm a wrestler. I'm going to have to show them like YouTube footage. <laughs> So close, like so close to my goal before I got hurt. Just like, and, you know, it came down to just overworking myself. Oh my god, the impossible dream. Okay, that's funny that we're driving by that. I took my first ever wrestling bump there. Really? Yeah, unintentionally. But <laughs> they used to have, um, I mean, it wasn't really a wrestling ring, but it was just like a tube, like a bunch of, um, like boards just built up yep. and it had the frame and it had like just like round poles in the ground and it had uh what's the word for it like uh not like in but like a very cheap like the that can scratch your skin turf and like you, you just like you touch it and you're, you're just hurt i know your hand. i know what you're talking it's like, about it's like it's like rough yeah like, it's like rubbing your hand on like a brush or something yeah. so it had that like no padding or nothing so I don't really know why they put it in there and what its intention was, <laughs> but I used to go there with my cousins. This is like the first time we go to this park and it's supposed to be known for just like the rides it has there and just and stuff like that. And we walk in and all we care about is this wooden box in the middle of this park. <laughs> and it has like uh, like actual ropes, but they're just all loose hanging down. Uh, we didn't care. Yeah. I was just like, holy crap, a wrestling ring. Yeah. Like we're gonna go do wrestling. So we started like shoot pile driving each other and oh, pedigreeing and rock bottom and like we're hurting ourselves yeah. but we don't know any better we think this is like what a wrestling ring is like yeah. so it feels good because like now i'm getting healthier i can feel myself being able to do more Shoulder, weight right stuff. yeah it's so weird because like I mean, I went to the, I went and got checked out, obviously, like numerous times at the hospital. Uh, yeah. But I've just been like healing myself for the most part without uh, physical therapy or anything like that. I mean, just independent professional wrestler's brother. <laughs> um, there's still like a bulge in my shoulder where you can see it's like attached to my pectoral. 
and this won't, this won't fix itself. I never thought I would wrestle AJ Styles. And not that I couldn't or I wasn't good enough, I just didn't know how motivated I was gonna to be to get to that point eight years ago. Here it is, and it's like, I, of course, I couldn't get to something so amazing without having to be tested and tried. This really is like one of the better workouts like I've been having for a while. Good. Like not crazy weight, but like I feel, I feel the like the blood flowing through everywhere. Nice. It's like it, in the process of me, I heard like I suffered nerve damage. Mm -hmm. So like certain parts in the right side of my body, I like can't feel. Like I have no feeling in my fingertips. No. Like yeah, and then it's been gone for like like since June. Wow. And we're now in what October? Yeah. It's November. Uh, so it's just really weird. And for a while, like my whole thing was locked up, and progressively, like as it's loosened up, and I can kind of like feel like. It feels like lines going to my body where it's like, I can feel from here to here, but I can't feel from here to here. And then like, I'll stretch it out or I'll massage it out and then I'll feel like the blood flow all the way down. And it's like, it might not be the blood flow, I might be using in the wrong terminology, but yep. I feel like uh, I have feeling there again. Yeah, yeah. And it's like right now, a lot of my sensors, sensories are working and I haven't felt like this in a while. So it's really cool. It's one of the things where it's like, perfect timing. A lot of my early memories with wrestling uh, are kind of really just derived around the Macho Man Randy Savage. Uh, I really don't remember, like a lot of guys in wrestling can remember like dates and facts and things specifically, matches they remember. I just remember the Macho Man. I was so in just captivated by his presence, the things that he did. Like, I don't really think I understood the wrestling part of it at all, but everything that he did, I just I just wanted to watch and I wanted to see what he would like what he was going to do next, what costume he was going to wear. Like, I wanted to see like what he was going to say in, his, in the promos and everything like that. And I just fell in love with the character. But I hated wrestling, but I loved the Macho Man. My sister, my brother, uh, my younger sister, they, were, they loved wrestling. And I just wanted to like fit in with what they were watching. So I would just sit through like, uh, <clears throat> through like the Attitude Era stuff. But I, didn't, I never appreciated any of it. And I never was like, emotionally invested because I just didn't care enough. Like a uh, Raw would be on and I would flip over to like Monday Night Football because that's all I really cared about. And like during the commercials, I'd flip back to Raw and just see what was up. But as soon as football was back, I'd go so back. It was mainly football. Yeah, right? all, it was always football. I would do it. I mean, I would say at least until about 15, 16 years old is like, that's when I started appreciating wrestling. When I went to high school, it was like not the cool thing to like be a, like a wrestling mm -hmm. fan. And we, I remember I was like super closeted about it. <laughs> and I remember one day over breakfast, like the, they do the preschool breakfast, you go in early, you get in the yeah. cafeteria. Yeah, I was yeah. sitting down with Matt Magnum, he asked me like, hey man, did you watch this like wrestling pay-per-view? And I was just like, nah man, wrestling's stupid. <laughs> and, then, and then he was just like, oh yeah, it was really cool man. Like Edge did this thing where he came out and beat up Cena. I was like, dude, wasn't it fucking awesome? <laughs> and he just looks at me like, uh. And that was kind of like where we had our bond. We were like, you know what? Like, we're wrestling fans. We're friends. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do this together. I didn't give a fuck. Like, I like people would. The teacher would call me to the front of the class. Like, I'd get up like this, like, and then I'd be writing on a chalkboard or something, and then or the marker board uh, in high school, and then like, I'd be writing, 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 and then to present my answer, I would like always underline something and do the big macho man twirl, like as if I had like the the towel, the tassels all over me, and then I would just do, like just be dumb and like. That was my way of being able to be more comfortable with myself. Uh, and at the time I was still playing football, I was still trying to like get drafted and go to college and stuff like that. That was still my dream. Uh, I had a friend, uh, Matt Magnum, who kind of made like a, a silly promise. Like, hey, if, if, you, if you ever start training, like don't do it without me and I won't start training without you. And that was like a ninth grade pact. Like just stupid thing that like teenage kids like talk about like, if you're gonna drive across the country, I'm gonna be the guy in the van with you. Like don't go without me. Uh, we decided that we were gonna do like, hang out with our friends and do wrestling. And we just, we didn't know the appropriate way to start training. So we figured if we just go beat ourselves up, like it wasn't, we never did like anything crazy, like hardcore stuff. Like there, it was sprinkled in there 
for the kids that wanted to do it. Like, but Matt and I were always so focused on like learning how to do a headlock properly. So like they would be doing their stuff and they'd be hurting each other and we didn't care. And we were you know, like inside, like uh, looking up videos and trying to look up footage and be like, okay, why is he standing like that? We didn't know why like things were going on. We were like, we just saw it and we saw the same thing. And we're just like, okay, maybe that's because it hurts more that way. Like, well, maybe it's, it's supposed to be like, we just had no clue. We, had, we just wanted to know, we wanted to emulate what we saw. And I don't think it was until like ninth, 10th grade where I really started seeing wrestling in a different way. But uh, you asked like when I thought I was gonna be a wrestler. Dude, honestly, I didn't think that until like four years ago. I'm like, and I'm eight, I've been in wrestling for eight years. Uh, so halfway, through. halfway through. I mean, because when I say I sucked at wrestling when I first got into it, that is literally an utter, I was the fucking worst wrestler you'd ever, the first time I got in a ring, I ran the ropes and fell. At this point, I kind of was, uh, I started hearing about Ring of Honor because I didn't know what independent wrestling was. I was like the guy that's uh, outside the bubble where, I mean, where I, where we would, were filming in my own neighborhood, like wrestling shows used to run down the street from my house, but I never knew wrestling was there because all I knew was TV wrestling. And I always, there was, I always wondered in the back of my mind, like, where do they get these guys from? Like, is there like a house these guys grow up in? And then it's just like, bam, because like, they just come out of nowhere, like, or like the random guys that like, uh, that are brought up to TV for, as enhancement talent. And it's just like, where did you find this dude? Like, I don't understand where they come from. He's like, he's not The Rock. So like, where, where does he go after this? Cause he's all like, they, are all these guys still working for like WWE? Like I was so confused. And then I found out like that there was Ring of Honor, independent wrestling. So I had seen uh, like Paul London, who uh, like I'm a huge fan of. So I, I was able to watch uh, his stuff in Ring of Honor and watch him go on the TV. So it was cool to follow him to that. He was like the first guy I ever got attached to from an, from like an independent standpoint and then watch him go to have success. Because when I saw Ring of Honor, I was just intrigued by what he was able to do. I, and I think it, with him, it was more of like, the way he was able to make me believe that he was really like getting his ass kicked. I mean, and he, it was, but like I, I like he got sympathy out of me, uh, and and that was like the first guy to like draw it out uh, in an independent standpoint. Hero and Punk was the first like independent like feud tape that I got, and I would watch Hero for the wrestling aspect. Uh, I couldn't really resonate with like I. Uh, like him as a person because I didn't, I didn't know too much and Punk always was the guy who was very vocal. So it's like, oh man, like I really like Punk talking shit. It's like, if I could talk a bunch of shit, but I could wrestle like Chris here, oh, fuck, that'd be so awesome. I want to be known as a great worker. I want to be a guy who could do all of that stuff and then some. I want to do what Kenny Omega's done. I want to do what Prince Devitt's done. I want to go and become a fucking icon. I saw that JT put out a shirt that was like, that new knockout kid. And I was like, okay, all right. They're making us look stupid, and I'm just like, no, like you don't get it. Like, this is by design. I just heard things in several different locker rooms. And I was like, well, dude, I was like, here, here we go. And so JT um, was a better man than I was, because I wouldn't have taken it. And he said that, and he's like, yeah, I'll do it. These concrete fucking streets have made me into who I am now. And it's just so nuts being back here for so long. Oh, don't start saying stuff like that because you're gonna make me cry on camera and I've been trying real hard not to cry on camera. That's when I kind of was like in my brain, like this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it forever. I'm going to, I, I don't give a fuck about the money. I'm going to be the best professional in the world. Oh, oh, oh. See you Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I checked my thing, I'm like, wait a second. Like, yeah. this is creating a buzz here. Like, there's a buzz about this match. What's up, guys? What's going on? How's it going? Man, everybody looks so excited. Yes! I look like a broken condom. Like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Alright, we'll take you. We'll get a couple stitches. <clears throat> I really sucked for a really long time, man. Like, I was a really bad, bad, bad time. It just became redundant. It became the same old shit. I never thought I would wrestle AJ Styles. And not that I couldn't or I wasn't good enough. I just didn't know how motivated I was gonna to be to get to that point eight years ago. Here it is. Dude, you're the second person who told me that. My buddy Dave told me Him and Steve that. Smith for Gronk. Can you make it a documentary? Yeah. <laughs> you wanna be in it? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see ya. Bye. Bill Carr, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Carr.
by my buddy Uha Nation, Paul Cruz. Yep. Like, I used to make this joke with him. Uh, every time I work out, I was trying to get Uha swole. <laughs> uh, you know, I just pursue, you know, following my dreams and, you know, making something out of myself. And, you know, just having him there at that moment when it was Sandlot Cup was, was unbelievable.